Delft South was established on the outskirts of the city of Cape Town in the mid-1990s to house homeless families as part of the government's reconstruction and development program. The Delft South community is demographically and culturally mixed, comprising of colored and black persons and adherents of Christian, Muslim, and traditional African belief systems. The population is young, with more than half the inhabitants under 18 years old. As the township has evolved, home-based businesses have sprouted, providing basic services such as hair care, car repairs and panel beating. Micro-convenience stores, known as spazas, provide the community with their everyday necessities. From about 2005, Immigrant storekeepers came to Delft to set up spaza shops in competition to local business persons. The majority of these immigrants came from Somalia and had, upon entering South Africa, acquired asylum or refugee status. The Somali shops were very price competitive and the number in operation expanded rapidly, both through the establishment of new stores as well as the takeover of shops from local residents who were unable to compete. Sporadic incidents of violence towards the immigrant shopkeepers first began to occur in September 2006. Over the next two years, a number of Somali shops were robbed and at least three shopkeepers murdered. In May 2008, a sequence of xenophobic violence struck many of the townships across South Africa. Foreigners and their businesses were the main targets, and many were forced to abandon their businesses and relocate away from the townships. Though the xenophobic violence in Delft itself was muted, the threat was sufficient for the great majority of foreign shopkeepers to withdraw from the area and close their shops. However, as soon as the national xenophobic anger began to subside, most of these shopkeepers returned to Delft. In 2011, foreign spaza owners are still confronted with violence on a regular basis. Sustainable Livelihoods Foundation set out to investigate the social and economic basis of the conflict between the community and foreign spaza shopkeepers. The research was undertaken in December 2010 and included a mapping of the spatial distribution of the 106 spazas operating in the area, interviews with shopkeepers to obtain a price comparison of six items including bulk, eggs and bread, and a workshop with local spaza shop owners to discuss the impact of competition on their businesses and their strategies for survival. The research also interviewed 50 households in the area in an attempt to ascertain the data on shopping trends and price competition. The findings are documented here. Foreign-run spaza shops are more price competitive than locally-run spazas, but not by a significant margin. The price differential in the surveyed products is less than 5% on most items. Where local spaza shops are able to obtain supplies through wholesale supply chains, their prices are very competitive and in the case of Coke, the most competitive. However, foreign businesses are more competitive because of their access to resources. Then they've got a new system, there's like buckies coming around with mm. mobile wholesalers. That's the new in theme of the Somalis now. Mobile wholesalers. So then the stop. To, 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 the to all the shops. There is a strong cooperation among foreign businessmen, especially among Somalians, 
in procuring goods, thus saving on transport costs and enabling bulk purchases. Foreign spaza shops also tend to be larger in size than local ones, with the owner often overseeing several shops and employing others to run them. All of this allows these foreign entrepreneurs to operate at a much greater economy of scale. This expansion of foreign spaza shops and the competitive nature of them has undoubtedly led to the decline of local businesses. This decline in business has led to a general disenchantment amongst local spaza owners with the spaza market and incredible hostility towards foreigners who they deem as a threat to their livelihoods. This sometimes translates into violence directed at foreigners and their business in Delft. We can make it much more productive. There's no assistance from no one. Why do they invest in us? Where do we get this job opportunities? We already meeting them halfway. Why can't they assist us financially? We are from local communities. We are local people. They come from another world. You understand? They are in our world now. So they actually built a barrier around them. can be understood in terms of xenophobia must be questioned. The violence in Dal South seems to be related more to crime than strategic racial hostility. There is territorial competition among spaza businesses and there is evidence that suggests that business robberies and possibly even murder have been used as a proxy to, to conduct turf battles. However, these instances tend to only involve individuals and small groups. Although some local shopkeepers are resentful of the increased competition from foreign shopkeepers, their attitudes have not mobilized community-wide opposition towards foreign businesses. SLF research has shown that the great majority of households in Delft South will prefer to shop for everyday necessities at the nearest spaza, regardless of the nationality of the shopkeepers. While community cohesion in Delft South ensures xenophobia is not manifested on a great scale, there is no doubt that violence will continue to occur, so long as local livelihoods are put at risk from the increase in competition that oversaturation of the spaza market ensures. What's going to happen to you if your business closes because of too much competition? What is the consequence? Okay, first of all, then I wouldn't even be able to afford my child a suite. Sometimes it wanders through my mind. I'm doing an honest living, but it's actually helped. 